dimly lit room, the pages of a 15th century Islamic psalm book are being meticulously restored. With strips of paper and glue, Elias Ahmed undertakes the work of piecing together the words of his ancestors. This is part of a collection of 1,200 manuscripts dating back to the 13th century, housed and preserved here in the Sharif Museum in Harar. Yes, I collected. I get medicine from it by collecting. I'm proud of my, my ethnicity, my religion, my culture. In the 7th century, Muslims came to Ethiopia fleeing persecution in Mecca, and over time, this city became a center of Islamic learning. Nowadays, uh, everything was changed. Uh, no, no, if, if you are uh, learning Arabic, if you are uh, writing Arabic, and, uh, but now it was reviving because everything, our culture is reviving. Harar, also known as Jugol, is the center of Muslim life in Ethiopia. The country has a population of 96 million people, of which 44% are Orthodox Christian and 34% Muslim. There's been tension between the two faiths in the past, but there is something unique here. When you are enter uh, to Jogol, first you see a Coptic church, Madanalem church. If you go 15 meters, not 15 kilometers, 15 meters you get great Jamia mosque. If you go 20 meters, you can get Catholic church. So that three of them live with peace in the coexist, uh, what do you call, intolerance. Respect each other, you see. We admire them, they admire us. We didn't touch them, they didn't touch us. We, 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 we go to the mosque, they go to the church. It is a paragon of religious coexistence, and in 2003, was awarded a Cities for Peace Prize by UNESCO. Most Ethiopian uh, cities, there are conflicts, but they tried it in Harar also. But the people are patient. We have a um, inter-religious committee in Addis Ababa and everywhere in, in the country. Uh, work together and support each other. So that's why, that's why. So thanks God we are living peacefully. Here in a 10th century mosque, young and old are bowing to pray. They practice a strand of Islam known as Sufism. Sufic uh, Islamic way is peaceful and uh, it is tolerance, you see, so that uh, uh, you, are no, you, you don't be aggressive. Back in the museum, Elias is continuing his work of restoration. The Sufis were not only influential in spreading Islam, they were also enlightened thinkers, scholars writing books on mathematics, medicine, and astronomy. This book shows the sketches of astronomers in Ethiopia back in the 17th century. And today, in the hills outside the capital Addis Ababa, they're staring out into the same skies, making new discoveries. You can see almost anything. We have uh, taken images of galaxies, stars, clusters, moons, planets, and many, many other celestial objects in the universe. Gion Ashanavi is a 24-year-old engineer at Ethiopia's first space observatory which opened in February this year in the Entoto Hills, around 3,200 meters above sea level. That's really something enormous that you feel because from my early age, from my childhood, I was really interested in astronomy. And the second one is technology. So uh, starting with a telescope, doing such uh, research and getting engaged in such fields is a dream come true.
you can say how much interested, how much happy I, w I have been that these telescopes are being um, implemented in our observatory. The observatory currently has two one-meter telescopes and a small team conducting research. Among them is a Russian professor with experience of this work all over the world. The unique location of this observatory allows us to observe practically all sky with good coverage of northern and southern hemispheres. Of course, developing country cannot compete with these rich countries in these fields of astronomy. But uh, there are many unsolved problems in astronomy which don't require huge telescopes, but they require huge amount of observing time. So we, we concentrate on such kind of projects. The program was launched by an independent organization the Ethiopian Space Science Society. And its vision encompasses more than just the stars. The first objective, the first one is to promote space science and astronomy. The second one is establish a, a good research center that can bring all Ethiopian universities and research centers to work together. And the third one is strong to make to be strong international collaboration. And finally, transforming science and technology to the country. Thus far, the project has cost approximately five million dollars, put forward by members of the society and the Saudi Ethiopian billionaire, Sheikh Mohammed Al Amudi. But as the project expands to include more observatories and a satellite program, there's hope the government will offer support. Of course, Ethiopia is growing fastly, but that sustainable economy should be supported by technology. It should be supported by science, with strong support. We are renting satellites. If you go to the broadcasting center, we are renting satellites. Do you know how much dollars we have, how much millions of dollars we are paying? That, that, that's a secret thing that people may not know. So we have to revert this. The basic and important thing is, Ethiopia has to have its own satellite in the coming five years. It's an ambitious plan, and along with the tools, it will need a talented team. In the center of Addis Ababa, young students from a range of secondary schools across the city have gathered to share their passion for science. My name is Mira McConnell, I am 17 years old and I want to be a particle physicist. I want to know what I'm made of. I want to know what this everything is made of. I want to know what this astonishing universe is made of. My name is Demichiel Damto, I'm 16 years old. I want to be a rocket scientist. I love rocket science because, first of all, when I was a child, I was dreaming to reach the stars. But these drawings are just a design of the objects that I have imagined. My dream is to see these types of designs into a real, into a real matter. To touch them, to see them, to be functional. My name is Dagam Teresa. I'm 13 years old and I want to be a robotic engineer. This is the boat which, which I made. I'm interested in physics and uh, inventing things in the field of invention. For these young people, there is no limit. And with a little support, it is they who will be building a bright future for Ethiopia.